All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll uh, commence with the planning uh, committee. Uh, before we begin, though, I'll just make a, a quick note. Uh, uh, Councillor Alan Hubley is uh, uh, representing us as vice chair today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Um, because uh, unfortunately the chair, as you know, you take wild horses to drag her away from this table, but unfortunately is suffering from a, a mild concussion. So she'll be off today and we wish her well. Uh, so I'll be serving as chair today. Um, that being said, um, I'm gonna uh, I'll go to Got it. This is a public meeting to consider the proposed comprehensive official plan and zoning bylaw amendments listed in items one to six in today's agenda. For the items mentioned, only those who make oral submission today or written submissions before the, uh, before the amendments are adopted may appeal this matter to the local planning uh, appeal tribunal. In addition, the application must, may be, may appeal the matter to the local planning uh, appeal tribunal if council does not adopt the amendments within 150 days of receipt of the, uh, of, of the application for zoning and 210 days for the official plan amendment. A comment sheet is available at the door for anyone wishing to, uh, wishing to submit written comments for these amendments. Also, just quick note, uh, councillors, uh, as a reminder, if you have any motions for the items listed today, please provide a copy ahead of time uh, so we can use them, uh, and uh, please provide them to, uh, to uh, staff. So, first of all, any declarations of interest? Seeing none, confirmation of the minutes, uh, March 28, 2019. Are these uh, confirmed? Thanks, Jeff. Uh, moving on to the agenda. Uh, the first item on the agenda, we do have a delegation. Uh, it's related to uh, 10 Oblades and 175 A Main Street, so we'll hold that item. Ron Rose, are you in the crowd today? Ron? Okay, good, thank you. Item number two is the uh, zoning bylaw amendment for 20 Mark Avenue. Uh, we have a speaker here today as well, so we'll hold that item. Item number three is uh, 263 Greensway Av Avenue, and we do have quite a few uh, delegations. We have four here today, so we'll hold that item. Item number four, uh, we have, uh, it's 4840 Bank Street. Uh, I do have a Daniel Flan again on this sheet. Daniel, are you here, are you, are you here to speak in, f uh, in favor of or against? In favor of okay, so I guess we'll have to, we'll hold that item. Uh, item number five, uh, we have uh, 4747 and 4755 Bank Street. Uh, we have no speakers on that one. Yeah, so we do have a, a, a amending motion, and we do have the applicant, Vincent. If, uh, if this uh, carries, do you see the need to speak, Vincent? Are you here? Okay, so uh, seeing that. Can I just ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. How many houses do we expect to be built in this neighborhood? 250 more? Thank you. So on that, uh, on that uh, item, I'll uh, go to Vice Chair Hubley to read the amending motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Therefore, be it resolved that items uh, four, five, and six, actually the same motion is going to apply to all three, on the Planning Committee agenda of April 11th reports uh, ACS2019-PIE-PS-0033 and ACS2019-PI-PS-0031 and finally, ACS 2019-PI-PS-0032 be amended to include the following comment from Councillor Meehan. Quote, Councillor Meehan would like some effort by planning staff and the developers to review the placement of any park and natural spaces within these three applications to protect some of the established trees and scrubs. Instead of clearing the land and redeveloping a park space and planting new trees, the council would like to see some of the established trees to be protected and incorporated into the natural and park spaces, end of quote. Great, uh, thank you, Vice Chair Hooley. So uh, on that motion, yep, go for it. 
Why, why are these comments being added at, uh, at this point? Was she not circulated on the report in the first place? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, the report uh, request for comments would have been um, circulated in advance of the Okay, so she had plenty of opportunity to provide comments before today? All right, the, next. The Councillor was aware okay. of the report. So uh, on the motion that uh, Vice Chair Hubley has read that would apply to all three, is that item carried? Thank you. And uh, on item number five itself, is that item carried? Uh, no, uh, actually the speaker is on item number four. Uh, so item number five, we don't have any speakers listed except for the applicant and he says there's no need to speak if this one's carried. So on item five, is that carried? Uh, as amended, carried as amended, thank you. Item number six, uh, we don't have any speakers on this one either. It's uh, 4789 Bank Street. Uh, on this item, is this item carried? And, yeah, and yeah, as amended, that's correct. Item number seven, uh, we do have a speaker on the list. It's, so it's the applicant, so uh, uh, Curtis. Curtis, you in the crowd here today? If, uh, if, uh, if we're good with this, do you feel a need to speak today? Okay, so on this, uh, on this item, we do have a mending motion, I believe, and I'll go to Vice Chair Hoot. Okay, uh, whereas Minto has undertaken the design and construction of similar infrastructure, i.e. roundabouts along uh, Brian Coburn Boulevard within the last year, and whereas there is a desire to ensure a consistency of work and ensure the project meets the city timeline, Therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Committee recommend uh, to Council uh, to approve that Minto may extend the existing design and construction contract it has in place relating to the design and construction of the roundabout at Brian Coburn Boulevard and Strasburg Street to proceed with the proposed works identified within the front ending report. Uh, roundabout Brian Coburn Boulevard at Jerry Lalonde Drive slash Jerome uh, Jodwin. Uh, drive uh, ACS 2019-PI-PS-0030 at Brian Colburn Boulevard at Jerry Lalonde Drive and Jerome uh, Jodwan Drive. Great, so uh, thank you for that, Vice Chair Hubley. Uh, again, seeing no speakers on this item as amended. This is carried. carried. Great, thank you. On to item number eight. We don't have any listed speakers except for Marie um, Chan, but uh, that being said, uh, if this item carries, Murray, do you feel the need to speak today? Great, thank you. So I'm again, not, I might have made, I've got a couple just quick questions. So you want to hold that? Yeah, okay. okay, so we'll have a, we're going to hold that. Item number eight is held. And we're right back at the beginning. All right, so on to item number one. Great, so we'll just wait for the staff to take a seat. And at this point, we do only have one delegation, Ron Rose, if you want to come. Oh. Okay, so we'll get uh, Ron Rose to come forward, and please, uh, if you can take the, the seat right there. So while we're waiting for our delegation to come forward, I'll get Vice Chair Hubley. We do have a technical amendment. If I can get uh, Vice Chair Hubley to please read that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Therefore, be it resolved that Planning Committee recommend to Council that the report recommendation be modified to the following. That the Planning Committee recommend Council approve an amendment to the Zoning Bylaw 2008-250 uh, for uh, 175 A Main Street to permit a six-story building as detailed in Document 2, details of the recommended zoning for Building 2A, and also, therefore, be it resolved uh, that the Planning Committee recommend to Council that Document 1, the location map, be revised uh, to the following. Uh, and therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Committee recommend to Council that Document 2, details of recommended zoning for Building 2A, be replaced with the following. The proposed change to the City of Ottawa Zoning Bylaw 2008-250 for 175A Main Street uh, one, rezone the land shown in document one as follows. A, rezone area A from TM2301 uh, and H bracket 20 to TM1, uh, sorry, bracket 1, H bracket 20. 
Add, and number two, add a new exception, uh, TM bracket one H bracket 20 to section 239 urban exceptions with the provision similar in effect to the following. A, in column two, add the text TM bracket one H20, uh, uh, sorry, bracket 20. And B, in column five, add the text minimum front yard setback, two meters, maximum front yard setback, three meters. Subsection 197 bracket four applies with respect to the above minimum and maximum front yard setbacks. However, 197 bracket four bracket D does not apply. A parking garage is only permitted below grade. Ornamental elements such as sills, belt courses, cornices, uh, parapets, and pilasters, I hope I'm saying that right, and canopies and awnings may project up to uh, 0.2 meters of the property line. Section 197 bracket three bracket G bracket two does not apply. A rooftop washroom area to maximize height of 4.2 meters is considered a permitted projection above the height limit. Two, has a maximum floor area of 20 square meters. And therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Committee recommend the Council that document three, details of the recommended zoning for building 2B be removed from the report and therefore be it resolved that there be no further notice pursuant to subsection 34, bracket 17 of the Planning Act. That's it, wow. And that was just the therefore be it resolved. Isn't Vice Chair fun? Isn't that a wonderful role? All right. Uh, so on that, uh, thank you very much for that. And we have Mr. Rose here. Mr. Rose, uh, you have five minutes uh, to speak. Uh, the floor is yours. Ready to go? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak to this motion. The Old Ottawa East Community Association supports the proposal to split consideration of the two buildings in question. We welcome the decision to seek an official plan amendment for uh, this particular zoning designation further down the line. We have some concerns with the proposed changes for building 2A. Uh, in particular, we see no reason to allow washrooms on the rooftop. Um, while the Old Ottawa East Community Association continues to have some concerns, uh, particularly with the washrooms, we have no objections to this proposal at this time. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you very much for that, uh, that uh, delegation today. Uh, any questions? for the delegation? Seeing none, thank you very much, Mr. Rose. Next up, we have Paul Goodkey. Paul? Uh, my name's Paul Goodkey. Great, thank you have five minutes. The floor is yours. Allow me to speak. Um, I'm in favor of the uh, proposal for the 2A building. I have a I noticed, I've been away for a, a, about a week on holiday, and there were some new drawings added to the, uh, the DVAP website, dated April 5th, and I believe this is one of them. But there, there was also, well, this is one of them. This is the roof that I'm, ta I'm wondering about. If I look at the elevation drawings, I see some projections above the height limit at the Main Street frontage. And I, I, I don't know what that is. There's three columns going up. Whether there's a roof on top of it, I don't know. But I, I think they must be an error because this drawing would, would show a roof at the dotted line on the right. So if you look at the dotted line, that's the roof of the uh, penthouse washroom elevator uh, and equipment area. But I'd just like confirmation from, there should be confirmation that there isn't any other projections above the height limit besides that area and the stair um, on, the, on the western end of the building. 
Thanks very much. Great, thank you. So uh, before you leave, uh, I'll certainly make note of that and ask for clarification from staff. Is there any questions for the delegation today? Seeing none, thank you, uh, Mr. Goodkey, for coming out. So uh, can I get some clarification on the comments made by the delegation, please? Certainly. Um, part and parcel with this application for zoning amendment is also an application for site plan control. And so a resubmission to that site plan control process had been submitted April 5th and posted on the development application search tool. So those are the elevations Mr. Goodkey's referring to. I'm happy to go back. Um, I don't have the elevations with me today, but I can clarify. But to my knowledge, um, the drawing shown on the screen today illustrates there's two mechanical penthouses um, proposed on building 2A, um, and that's the subject of this application before us today. Um, and they both meet the provisions of the permitted projections in the zoning bylaw with the exception of the bathroom included. Great, uh, thank you for that. Is there further questions to staff? Councilman Howard. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I, certainly on Mr. Goodkey's inquiry, I, I want to make sure that we, we, we do have that information solid because uh, I think everyone's in support of, of, uh, of this building. I am as well. Um, but I want to make sure that we've got it, we've got it right. Um, the only piece that I would like to see uh, potentially change is around the bathrooms on the rooftop. Um, I've spoken with uh, regional about that. And actually, I just, th this item um, was originally deferred because Mr. Kardish couldn't, couldn't be here uh, for that item. Is Mr. Kardish here to, to talk to this? Well, actually, I'm going to uh, ask the, um, the applicants if they wish to come forward and speak today. We have put a few of them, so uh, who's representing, representing regional group here today? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, hi, Aaron and Kelly. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming to speak with us today. Is is Mr. Kardish here today as well? Or? No, he's not able to be here today. Okay. And okay. Yeah. And, and, and we he really wanted to be here, but we knew we couldn't defer it one more time. Okay. No, I just because we canceled the last meeting, the for, whole thing, a, a yeah. day in advance because he couldn't be here for a family exactly. emergency. Yeah. We totally understood. Yeah. Uh, but here we are, and he and he's not here. So. Um, as I mentioned, I'm in favor of this. Could you folks potentially comment on the projection uh, that Mr. Goodkey was talking about? Is there actually a further projection besides the two uh, that, were, that were originally intended in that area? Uh, has that been changed? Like the new, the new dev app uh, information that came out April 5th, has that changed to have a higher no, uh, no. height limit? Okay, no. so what is that piece that he's speaking about? Aaron, do you mind going back to the... So Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll, do that, I'll deal with that in my presentation. It's pretty straightforward. Per, and I was just ready to say, maybe we can go ahead and, and, and allow the applicant to present first. Uh, apologies, I probably should have put that okay. first, but hey, okay. I'm filling in for Jan today. Um, so, uh, great. So uh, we'll be brief, and then we'll have Barry give a bit of a detail, which should answer most of the, the delegation's uh, questions. So, um, great. So for the entire delegation, just so you know, you do have 10 minutes as a group. Uh, so you have 10 minutes, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Chair and Councillors. Um, my name is Kelly Rodenizer. I'm the Director of Commercial and Multifamily Development here at Regional. I'm here with Erin O'Connor, who's the Manager of Land, and she's been responsible for the Greystone development. Um, we'd like to thank the Chair and Councillors for accepting the deferral of our application until today. Um, we also want to state that Regional is in support of the motion as presented to separate out the zoning bylaw to move forward with uh, 2A, which is 175 Main Street, the six stories, and deferring 10 Oblay for the nine stories. We'd like to make it clear that our position has not changed since our original application, which was filed to the city in March of 2018. Our planning consultant, Novatech, uh, professional's opinion remains the same, that an official plan amendment is not required, which is the same position as the staff's planning, um, as well as outlined in the report that's presented before you from March 28th. We filed an official plan amendment on Tuesday, April the 9th to the city. The application has been filed out of an abundance of caution and to clarify the policies related to the permitted heights in the secondary plan. It's important to note that Regional has not filed or made any changes to the building design or massing of 10 Oblay, which is the nine story building or six. And the plans that um, the delegation was speaking to were updated site plans 
um, for the site plan application. We ask that you approve our request to rezone 175 Main Street to allow us to move forward with our six-story purpose-built rental um, building with the construction, if successful, we hope to start this summer. And I'll move to Barry to give an overall uh, architectural and urban design context. I'll try to move through this as quickly as possible. I think it's important to realize from a design perspective as you get into something that things evolve and change and nothing is more substantive than the contrast with the demonstration plan that you see before us, which we inherited when we started to work on this project, which was basically a mixture of six and six story condo buildings sprinkled across the site. It had a combination of the pink as a mixed use uh, uh, mid rise, which is anything four to nine stories, and the brown was mid rise res, uh, low uh, mid rise residential. This was our first master plan. I think it's important to realize the first thing we did was actually look at the market and actually look at doing a plan that made sense in terms of the neighborhoods around it. So housing diversity and a variety of forms is really important. And if you can look at the areas that are dotted, and our initial thought was, hey, these should come down and we should do those as low rise. And that strategy had been immensely successful because we immediately had people moving in from your surrounding neighborhood who didn't have housing options, and housing options are really important. So that included things like singles and towns, uh, which weren't currently on the plan with a much finer grain pedestrian scale. Now, there are elements that are higher on the plan. This was our first 3D model of phase one, and what you'll see is all of this stuff now is built, and this is under construction. But you also realize that other parts of the scheme are evolving and changing because we can't uh, properly anticipate everything and one of the significant components of change is this area over here which is now uh, seniors and retirement home. When we started to look at 2A, 2B, or the mixed use right on Oblats uh, and on the Grand Dalle, we realized a number of really uh, significant shapers. One is that the Grand Dalle, which is a heritage piece, would preserve the view to the De Chatelet building. It's important to honor that. Secondly, along the Grand Alley was, was a row of trees which had root balls which had to be accommodated. So our, we actually had to adjust mass. The other part is Oblats Avenue is extremely narrow. We didn't realize that actually no parking could happen on Oblats. And then the other is a market notion that we actually break up the block so we could create some housing diversity and form diversity. And in the process of doing this, we went through a series of massing allocations, and as Kelly mentioned, we basically end of that is we went to a six story, which is 2A, and a nine story, which is 2B. But in part of that, it's a transferring a mass and trying to create something that has a proper human scale. So now I'll speak to Councilor Menard asked me about um, these elements. This is just a pergola that's on the roof. That's what you're talking about. There's no roof over top, but it's basically a form. But um, in designing the two parts of the building, we wanted to reflect different parts of the site, potential of different residents, uh, and also break up the massing along Oblats and the Grand LA. So here's our cross-sectional diagram. Um, this is an earlier diagram, so it's not entirely uh, reflective of the final plan, but there are a number of principles that are important to this. One is the greater setback at the Grand LA, which leads to the Chatelet building, the accommodation of the trees, and, a very, and the other is this notion of six-story datum, datum, but also relief along the Grand LA. So you see there's a major courtyard that's been cut back, so it's not a solid wall. And then we also increase the separation between 2A to B significantly, and we think that's a really important piece. Just want to speak a little bit about the cross-section and that's in yellow on the left, which is your, tradition, your traditional Main Street TM zone. A bit of a rant. I don't actually believe that cross-section makes any sense for Ottawa. I actually believe that what happens at the ground plane is really important. And two significant examples of that are these projects which are recently completed, one in Councillor, both of them in Councillor Leaver's Ward, and that's 1140 Wellington where the Bethany Hope building is, and the other one is Westboro Station. Both focus on what happens at the one and two story component. That is the most important thing in most main streets in Ottawa. This notion that you start right at the sidewalk and go right up, actually is creates canyons. And the best example I can think of that is the um, nun's property in just west of Island Park Drive. Rant is over. Um, the, um, <laughs> the 
so this is the site plan, just so you see. What we did, uh, what we did feel was important was that there's a gap in between these buildings that provide teaser parking, access to servicing, loading. All of that's pulled off of Oblats. Oblats is too narrow. We, we were successful in forcing some laybys uh, on Oblats. This is another shot at night showing the offset of the ground plane, the first floor. And I, I think, although no one's really talked about it, both of these suggest that the building mass and where the position in the mechanical penthouse is so far back that it's not in your view or in your mind. This is a 3D vision of what's showing what happens in between. Uh, the gap allows also for the residents of the domicile building to the north to actually have views to the Grand Allee, so that's a there. And that 2B actually stops uh, after the buildings to the north. This is another view of the same thing. The notion of the offset is important to us, even on Oblast. So you can see that the building has an offset from the ground plane, and as you look down the street, it has the same, uh, same general, oblast, uh, same general uh, offset. Those are my, uh, my key points. The others are technical drawings. If you want to go through the sun shadows, I could bore you to death. But the, um, the notion of a gap and, and breaking the buildings up and reducing the massing actually improves the sun shadowing effect and creates uh, gaps in that wall that could exist along Oblats and the Grand Delay. That's my presentation, uh, Mr. Chair. Happy to answer questions. Great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Holman, for that. Uh, clearly, you put a lot of work into this, so I do appreciate that. Any questions for the applicant? Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I think uh, this group's done a great job with, with 2A. Uh, I think that they've worked with the community on 2A, uh, that they've worked with planning and come up with a design that works well for this community. And the reason why is that it doesn't overshadow the Des Chatelet building. It fronts on to Main Street and provides um, good uh, design compared to the corners on Main next door to it, which was originally uh, already put in. And so I think uh, kudos to, to what you've done on 2A. Um, I think it's important that planning committee members know why we're here today, why the motion came uh, from uh, Mr. Tierney, Mr. Mr. Hubley. Um, the original plan for this space, there was concern about the secondary plan. The, there was a disagreement over whether the secondary plan allowed for a nine-story building at 2B. So that's why the motion is in front of you today. It allows the separation. 2A can be considered on its own, and, it, and there'll be no LPAT review of that, and so it can just go through and start, start construction. 2B uh, and other areas of the site will go through uh, an official plan uh, process to look at an amendment. I think the community welcomes this as well to get some clarity on what's there. Uh, but the same design principles that are being used for 2A, I think need to come into process for, for 2B in terms of the st historical context of this area uh, and the design work. And so I, I wanna ask staff, um, because I just saw the motion language yesterday around 7 p.m. Uh, in terms of this emotion of this significance, but I, I'm in favor of it. I just normally would like to see that a bit earlier. Um, but in terms of the official plan process, which is part of this motion for 2B, can you explain to me how that'll work in terms of um, uh, community being involved, their input? Uh, it's not like a, just an, an, an amendment to a zoning. It, it, to me, I, I think it's more important than that and will take into context other elements of the site, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chair, that's correct. So the official plan amendment process involves consultation and uh, a statutory public meeting and uh, that will follow that exact process. Um, Mr. James or Ms. O'Connell, if you have anything further to add to that? It's okay? That no, uh, no, Mr. Chair, no. Okay, fantastic. I, what I wouldn't want to see is to say, okay, look, we're just doing an official plan process to give, uh, you know, exactly what was asked for in the first place in this space. That shouldn't be the case. There should be true community consultation and input on this. So with that being said, I'm, I'm in favor of, of the motion. I, I wish the, the washrooms would be changed. I don't know if that's, uh, if someone from committee wants to bring a motion for it on that, but I uh, support it otherwise. So thanks very much. Well, thank you very much. And thanks to the applicant for coming out today. Uh, any questions further to staff? Seeing none on this item as amended, is this carried? Oh, I have to carry the motion first, so is the motion carried? And the amending motion is that, that the Vice Chair Hubley read it, is that carried? Oh. <laughs> He's not reading it again, it's in front of you. So carried? Thank you. Thank you for that. So we're on to uh, item number uh, two on the agenda, uh, zoning bylaw amendment for 20 Mark Avenue. We do have one speaker, Chris Greenshields. Chris, uh, are you here? If you can come forward, uh, 
feel free to take a seat right there and we'll get uh, your microphone warmed up. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, my name is Chris Greenshields. I'm with the uh, Vanier Community Association. I'm speaking on behalf of the, uh, of the VCA. Uh, the VCA uh, supports the application to rezone the site of 20 Mark Avenue in Kingsview Park. Our committee and local residents have uh, actively engaged in the consultations on this project and the related project at 263 uh, Greensway. We support the inf intensification and in infill because it fits in to the neighborhood and relates to the neighborhood, not to the properties behind fronting on Montreal Road, for example. In some detail, the city report extols how it fits in consistent with the official plan and the character of the adjoining neighborhood. You will note that the case for 263 Greensway is different, related rather to the higher built form transitioning to Montreal Road and much more restrained about how it fits into the neighborhood. The three-story building proposal is consistent with the area's R4 zoning, and most of the property, uh, uh, existing property use, which uh, is a uh, parking lot. So we don't see it as uh, spot zoning. As mentioned, the building, although higher, appears to fit well with the adjoining and opposite two-story apartment buildings and the adjoining property on, on the west, which is currently used as a group uh, home. Replacing a parking lot used by residents on Mark Avenue does represent a challenge, but the community has identified another underutilized parking lot nearby. We are not convinced, however, that um, residents would use the proposed uh, parking garage further away, uh, further away at 263 Greensway. Resident permit and other parking are also available. We welcome the fact that at least one unit will be fitted for disabled use. It may be useful to consider a parking space for a future disabled tenant, either adjoining the new building or with a disabled parking space on the street. The revisions to the side setback are a concern, but we hope these can be addressed as part of the separate site plan uh, control process. The importance of a parking space for uh, drop-off, pickup has also been uh, addressed by the applicant. The proposal uh, to add two subgrade units at two other apartment uh, buildings, so we're not just talking about 20 mark, um, in the vicinity is, is a concern, not only because of the floodplain conditions, but also because basements in the area are periodically flooded by stormwater, not, to, not mentioned in the staff report. We trust that appropriate measures will be taken to minimize the risk of stormwater damage in the renovation and to provide indemnification to, to tenants should the situation arise. It is important to increase the availability of affordable housing choices and thus we support the proposal on this basis. I want to thank uh, planning staff uh, for their active engagement on this uh, project. Uh, to, together with that of 263 Greensway. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Mr. Greenshields, for your presentation today. Do you have any questions to the delegation? Seeing none, thank you very much. And I, I guess you're gonna be back up on the next item, so we'll see you in a little bit there. Um, the applicant, uh, Dennis Jacobs and Ryan Colwine, are you here? Seeing no questions. Oh. I don't know if it'll go to him or to staff, but I'd like to follow up on the, the question about the disabled parking. Yep. So, to the staff prepared to take that, or would you like the applicant? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, there's a, from a bylaw compliance point of view, there's no parking required for this new building. Uh, through consultation, there was comments about the need for perhaps a, a short-term parking space or drop-off at the back of the site. Uh, that got incorporated into the plan. Um, if there's a need for accessible parking, it can be looked at, but from a zoning bylaw point of view, it's, it's not a requirement at this point. Great. Wonderful. So any further questions to the applicant, to staff? 
Seeing a none, was there any amendments on this one? No, right? So on this item, uh, item number 220 Mark Avenue, is this item carried? Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Greenshield, since you're already there, uh, we'll go on to item number three, uh, 263 Greensway Avenue. Uh, you're actually first on the speaker's list, so five minutes, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Uh, a member should already have our uh, more detailed written uh, sub submission. Our main objection uh, to the rezoning application for 263 Greensway is the proposal for spot zoning to permit a higher rise building that is incompatible with the neighborhood. Planning committee recently, uh, correctly, I think, refused an application for a spot zoning to accommodate expansion of an existing use on Island Park Drive. The report cites the official plan concerning consideration of the character and the surrounding community as a factor in determining compatibility. A four-story building consistent with existing zoning and floodplain restrictions, we think, will meet the plan's object objective of intensification. It would replace a parking lot and double the height compared to the adjacent apartment building and be compatible with the existing area, including the two adjacent um, homes. The community could support this, just as we support uh, the 20 mark uh, project. Staff write eloquently, as I mentioned, about the three-story building at uh, 20 uh, mark and how it satisfies the intensification policies, how the built form and design fit within the immediate surroundings. Um, it, it, it fits in terms of streetscapes uh, character and enlivens it. Not so eloquent about uh, 263 uh, Greensway. Uh, city staff are, have commended uh, 20 uh, Mark, but unlike 20 Mark, which also backs on properties on uh, Montreal Road, the report descri describes the uh, Greensway application largely in terms of its relation to Montreal Road as a transition to the existing uh, neighborhood. Well, um, it doesn't really address the uh, existing neighborhood, the residential area. There's no reference to responding to the street, streetscape uh, character. Instead, it, it dominates the streetscape. It does not fulfill design objectives to include enhancing the sense of community, nor ensuring the new development respects the character of existing uh, areas. The staff, is so diff uh, the staff report is so different respecting these two because Greensway simply does not meet the conditions. Instead, we seem to have an approach by staff to justify a spot rezoning in a small portion of property zoned R4 um, with the uh, rest of Mark Street corridor, an approach that is not compatible with abutting low-rise building forms and community use. In favor of rezoning so that it might better transition to a higher building if another exception is permitted for an abutting uh, TM uh, zone property under the uh, secondary plan. Instead of relating Greensway as a residential property to the adjacent neighborhood, there's a circuitous argument made to relate it to the potential development on Montreal Road. Despite the proposed uh, ring around Greensway, rezoning also risks opening the door to similar re uh, residential redevelopment in the immediate vicinity, resulting in a situation uh, we fear similar to Herongate, where affordable housing is being eliminated. Such a trend would undermine the official plan and uh, provisions concerning affordable housing. The proposed floodplain limits do not justify a six-story building. It may have been better to turn this portion of the property into green space befitting a, uh, a floodplain, but we have supported intensification and infill here with suitable landscaping given uh, the floodplain and periodic storm water damage. Accordingly, we would also hope that the city see the development, the developer commit to consult and contract in writing with neighbors about any damage related to water drainage. The city commission, uh, commissioned wise uh, report recommended against building an MUP on the south side of the development. Aside from the reduced green space, there are safety issues, as the report points out. With the garage entry uh, abutting the MUP, together with the proposed open access to the Vanier Parkway, the project design risks promoting more of the existing criminal activity, uh, particularly behind the Tim Hortons. Recalling the mistakes around the city's now closed Waller Street Mall, across from the uh, uh, Booth Shelter, together with the ongoing criminal issues here and the pending decision of a mega shelter 
uh, nearby. This committee risks repeating mistakes outlined in the citizen article on the mall uh, fiasco almost exactly one year ago. This would be inconsistent with the city's official plan and the provincial policy statement to avoid development and land use patterns which may ch cause public safety concerns. Members of the committee, you have, you're in a unique position to consider two applications. One that's strongly praised green shield, and another that up, doesn't please. fit so much. So uh, in our view, Greensway clearly uh, fails the same test. Thank you very much. Thank Merci. you for your presentation today. Do we have any questions of the delegation? Seeing none, thank you for coming out. Next up, we have Andrew Lens Lensden. Andrew? Great. And we have two more speakers after that, Linda Fish and Susan Lapine. So I just want to ensure that you guys are in the crowd. Good. Good morning. My name is Andrew Lumsden. I've lived in the city of Vanier for over 50 years. I hardly endorse the comments just made by Mr. Greenshield concerning the proposed uh, development at 263 Greensway. But I've come here today more to express my concerns that we may have another Herongate in the making. Not as tragic, perhaps, but potentially very disruptive to approximately 250 persons now living in rental apartments on Mark Avenue in Vanier. As we have just heard, the owner of these apartments has applied to the city to rezone from R4 to R5 an adjacent parcel of land known as 263 Greensway. Mark Avenue now houses 11 apartment buildings constructed in 1951. A 12th building is located immediately in front of the proposed six-story structure. Each of the 12 70-year-old two-story rental buildings contains approximately 10 two-bedroom apartments. They are now showing shines, signs of aging, cracks in the walls and ceilings, rust coming out of the taps, wooden floors that need resanding and refinishing. This is not to suggest that the developer has been a bad landlord. A few years back, for instance, new windows were installed. In recent years, however, there have been obvious signs of neglect. Repairs have been hard to arrange, and the cleaning of the hallways and shared laundry rooms is perfunctory at best. On the outside, the entrance doors are encased in attractive wooden frames. Sadly, they have not been attended to in years. As you enter these buildings, you are faced with peeling paint and other evidence of disrepair and lack of attention. Thus, all the indications are that, contrary to his assertions, the owner has little or no intention of continuing to retain these buildings as reasonably affordable rental properties. But I'm not here to take shots at developers. Instead, like everyone else, I want a better city, a city that welcomes and accommodates all, a city in which the poorer are not increasingly segregated from the more affluent however in inadvertently this may happen. A city that takes positive steps to fill the desperate need for more affordable housing. A city whose number one consideration in deciding whether or not to approve a zoning or a building application carefully examines the impact 
on the availability and location of affordable housing. Finally, I repeat, if the rezoning of 263 Greensway is approved and the new six-story building erected, the developer or a new owner will surely, sooner or later, move on to request a similar application for Mark Avenue. This will jeopardize the low rent housing on this street. It will be one more step in the gentrification of Vanier and Overbrook, but only west of the Vanier Parkway. East of the Parkway is quite another matter. 30 seconds. East of the Parkway is quite another matter. The approval by council over a year ago of a 350 bed men only shelter on Montreal Ro Road ensures that that part of Vanier and Overbrook will not become gentrified anytime soon. Thank you. Right, right down to the second, so thank you for that. Uh, seeing no questions to the delegation, thank you very much for coming out today. Next up, we have Linda Fish. Good morning. Hi, Linda. Bonjour, mon nom est Linda Fish, and I have lived at 30 Mark Avenue for the past 19 years. 30 Mark is next to 20 Mark, which is currently a parking lot, but soon to be developed into an apartment building. I ask to speak today to express my concern or fears that the city's decision to approve spot zoning at 263 Greensway will create a future precedent for the older apartment buildings on Mark Avenue. Why do I think this? because these buildings built in 1951 have been neglected and barely kept up to standards. The owner, through management, says that they won't tear down the old apartment building on Greensway, but it has been rumored for many years that they were not adding a 10th basement apartment there because it was going to be torn down. Uh, the current buildings on Mark Avenue are neglected and, get, and, and one gets the feeling that there is a reason for letting them in these conditions. Will there also be a future spot zoning proposal? Um, my question also is how will they maintain the 75 plus new apartments if they are not able to maintain the 110 plus apartments that they already own? Will they hire more staff or simply rely on one superintendent and one cleaner as they currently have? My question to all of you is why is it necessary to change the zoning to R5 in this beautiful residential area established as an R4 zoning. I'm not against the owner building at 263 Greensway, but not a six story. With a bit of creativity, they can still build 75 plus apartments with an R4. Thank you for the opportunity to express my concern and with the hope that we will be heard and not ignored. Merci. Thank you very much, um, Madame Fish. Any questions for the delegation? Oh, excuse. Yeah, we do have a question for you, actually. So if I could ask you to please take a seat. Bonjour, madame, ça va bien? Oui, merci. J'ai une petite question. Vous avez soulevé un point qui m'a intrigué. Ça, ça, C'est indirectement relié à l'application, mais le, la, le résident qui a parlé avant vous l'a également souligné. Vous êtes résidente des propriétés, propriétés locatives présentement du même propriétaire. Êtes-vous inquiète de perdre votre logement? Il semble y avoir comme un, une inquiétude actuelle, mais nous, aujourd'hui, ce que le comité est appelé à regarder, c'est deux deux segments de nouvelles propriétés. Donc, 
Je ne comprends pas l'élément de risque aux propriétés existantes, mais vous êtes locataire, donc avez-vous reçu oui. une lettre d'éviction ou quelque chose de genre? Non, non, c'est… Uh, I think maybe I'll just speak in English. It's just of note, we do have simultaneous translation as well, so if members uh, wish to participate. Um, il y a des rumeurs depuis longtemps, bien avant qu'on sache qu'ils étaient pour construire euh, un nouvel édifice sur euh, euh, Greensway, euh, que cet édifice serait, dé, serait démoli. Puis maintenant, euh, moi, ce qui m'implique, j'habite là. J'adore le quartier et j'aime beaucoup l'environnement du quartier. Pourquoi construire, commencer à construire des édifices plus élevés? Et puis, c'est un peu ça. Je, je suis d'accord avec mes collègues, M. Greenshield, uh, uh, M. Lumsden. Uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a question that I'm, I'm not fearful that they're going to kick me out tomorrow and that I'm going to be part of the Heron Gate. Uh, it's just that it has been an affordable area for me. Uh, it permits me to do other things in my life. And uh, I love the environment. The, we're next to the river, the trees, it's beautiful. If we start building high rises along that area, we're going to end up looking like Rideau Street, which is just horrible now. And I really am just concerned. I'm expressing my concern today because I support what Mr. Greenshield has just expressed. And Mr. Lumsden is the fear that We start with spot zone in one area, and the next thing you know, that whole street will become a spot zone. I, I just wanted to clarify. So I recognize your opposition to uh, the proposed four. St what was what is what would be permitted a four story, but is proposed a six story. I get to in terms of the two six three Greensway, but I wanted to clarify that as a, a tenant of those properties at this time, you're at no risk of of losing your unit. Correct. I hope not. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madame Fish. Uh, maintenant, uh, Madame Suzanne Lapin. Bonjour, Madame. Bonjour. Bonjour. Cinq minutes. Ça va bien aujourd'hui? Merci. Suzanne Lapin, je suis résidente de Kingsview Park. Kingsview Park, c'est le petit triangle où est-ce que la rue Marc se trouve. C'est un petit quartier, c'est un des petits et vieux quartiers de Vanier. Um, il y a à peu près juste sept rues dans Kingsview Park. La majorité, c'est R1, des résidences, et il y a quelques blocs de R4. Alors, je suis d'accord avec euh, l'édifice au 263 Greensway, mais je m'oppose ardemment à, au changement de zonage. De R4 à R5, je n'accepte pas ça. Le 263 Greensway il est intégré à notre quartier. Il fait partie du quartier résidentiel de Vanier. Il ne fait pas partie du chemin Montréal. Donc, c'est le quartier dans, Green, euh, dans Kingsview Park. Euh, en allouant, euh, en respectant le R4, le 263, il peut augmenter. Il peut avoir un autre étage. On peut construire plus haut. Donc, en respectant le R4, ça permet l'harmonie, la compatibilité du quartier. Donc, on a les résidences R1, R4 et puis R5 ou le développement du chemin Montréal plus haut. Euh, alors, en accordant un R5 au 263 Greensway, vous créez un précédent. Pour le restant, vous créez, comme je répète ce que les autres ont dit, c'est du spot zoning. Il y a d'autres rues où est-ce qu'il y a encore d'autres appartements semblables dans notre petit quartier, qu'est-ce qui va empêcher que le propriétaire ne va pas faire la même chose? Alors, c'est encore du spot zoning. L'autre chose qui m'inquiète et qui inquiète les résidents, c'est qu'en avant du, 263, du 267, il y a le 263, il y a sur la même parcelle de terrain. Qu'est-ce qui va empêcher, une fois que si vous accordez le changement de zonage, qu'est-ce qui empêcherait le propriétaire de détruire le 263 juste en face, puis créer quelque chose encore plus gros. Une fois que le zonage est accepté, un R5, ça ne se limite pas à 6 étages, ça peut aller beaucoup plus haut. 
L'autre chose aussi qui est inquiétante que j'accepte pas, c'est le mop, the mop, uh, the multi-use passage that's going to be built. Je suis complètement opposé à ça. C'est très inquiétant. Je devais dans le quartier. C'est pareil au mop du la rue, euh, le wall, euh, wall mall sur le marché bail. Ça va créer le même problème. Puis ça, je sais qu'on peut en parler euh, dans un autre, euh, euh, dans le plan du site. Ça, ça peut être discuté à ce moment-là. Mais je m'oppose à ce euh, passage-là. Euh, je demande de conserver le R4 comme on accepte le, euh, le 20 rue Marc, comme M. Greenshield a bien euh, expliqué. Euh, le 20 Marc, c'est parfait, ça respecte le voisinage, ça respecte euh, le built form design, uh, it respects the immediate um, surrounding. The development of 20 Mark is uh, consistent with the uh, guideline for low-rise infill. C'est ce qu'on veut. On veut le low-rise infill, tout comme le 20 Mark. Alors, si vous acceptez un R5, ça va détruire le quartier. Ça va détruire notre quartier résidentiel. Donc, un R4, ça va garder l'harmonie dans le quartier. Et puis, je vous remercie du temps que vous m'avez accordé. Et puis, j'espère que vous allez euh, refuser un changement de zonage euh, R5 dans notre quartier. Merci. Merci, Mme Lepine. Euh, question pour le délégué Non? Merci. Uh, now, uh, members of the committee, uh, we do have the applicant, Denim Jacobs, and uh, Ryan Coolwine here. Any questions for the applicant today before we go to questions to staff? Do you feel the need to speak today, uh, Dennis or Ryan? Uh, not if the committee doesn't feel it necessary. No. Great. Any questions to staff? Councilor okay. Fleury. So, just wanted to follow up on some of the community concerns relating to the 263. Obviously, there, pending uh, pending the review today, there would be uh, further elements relating to design and, and landscaping and so on uh, relating to site plan, but. Uh, notwithstanding, the last speaker asked questions relating to the change in zoning to an R5 and what that, would, what that means relating to uh, potential risk for neighboring properties or that, or that community. Can we, can we get uh, maybe a point of clarification from, from staff on uh, risk relating to, uh, to the zone, which is an R4, and, uh, and the specific <laughs> application? Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll answer the first part of that question in that uh, it went to an R5 zone because that's the zone code that would allow a mid-rise building. So from a, just a zoning code perspective, we needed to go R5 to recognize the mid-rise. Each application is reviewed on its own merits and there's no proposals before us right now on the balance of Mark Avenue. Um, I haven't seen anything to indicate that any are coming, but if applications that the community do fear, those again will be reviewed on their own merit. And I think uh, just to further talk about that, the difference in the rationales that was uh, sp spoken to in the two reports between 20 Mark and 263 and Greensway, um, my opinion is that the, although on the same corridor and the same street, the site context of those two properties is vastly different, which is why you see the resulting of the, the two different proposals. So is there a risk? I can't answer that, but if such an application would come in, it would be reviewed on its own merit and this proposal for 263 Greensway would not set a precedent. It's certainly something, committee, that we have to, to watch for. And you know, if, if there were other applications coming in as an R4 in that specific area, I would flag it. But based on the applicant coming in just further down the street, coming in within the, within the zone, to me it indicates that there's specific elements to that site that really rears on to the, the Vanier Parkway that's unique to that site, which I believe can can uh, can accept a, a more height and more uh, more rental apartments. Uh, that said, I do think that the Mark Street corridor is a very stable rental uh, community, uh, and and there's an appetite not just from the existing community but those in the surrounding that that uh, that stays uh, that that stability stays for that street. So I'm viewing those application as completing the the envelope of 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 what is p the potential along. Uh, that corridor. Um, obviously, we can't speak to Montreal Road because this is not a property that faces onto Montreal Road, but for, um, for that specific community, I think we have to look uh, at the application in the context that further down the street, they didn't come in and ask for a rezoning to an R5. They're respecting the R4 zone. So there, there, there's, there's a good example to say that there's stability uh, along that street in the neighborhood. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Ferry. Councillor Bieber. You know, I think they've answered, um, uh, Andrew has answered it, uh, Mark Avenue as a potential R5, I think what I heard is that you would, you know, on a preliminary basis, consider it to be very different. We wouldn't see six stories marching down Mark Avenue. So once again, why not? What is different about the context along Mark that would keep that height at the R4 height versus what I consider to be kind of a corner and an edge condition? Mr. Chair, I, I view the balance of Mark Avenue as an edge condition to the existing uh, low-rise neighborhood where um, it's, it's not fronting on uh, Vanier Parkway. It, it's not, it doesn't have that unique site context where um, a six-story building would have enough room to provide that transition. Um, like I said, the two sites are very close to each other, but the site context of the two are quite different in my opinion. And I think it would be a much more difficult um, argument to propose a six-story building on the balance of Mark versus what you saw on 263 Greensway. There's no secondary plan that contemplates Mark Avenue at this point, right? No, it ends on Montreal Road. Yeah, so the traditional Main Street policies that are part of the most recent OPA, though, would see Mark Avenue captured within the new depth, right? It would be possible, Mr. Chair, but only through lot consolidation if there was a development that took in both the um, Montreal Road properties and the Mark Avenue properties as, as one site. I wouldn't view something in behind on Mark Avenue with only frontage on Mark Avenue as being open to those traditional Main Street policies because there's no direct sort of access to Montreal Road. But that's not the rationale for Roosevelt, which is in behind. It's not contiguous to Richmond Road. The official plan policies with respect to the new depth of what's considered to be traditional Main Street applied to that discontiguous property in behind. I wasn't on that file. <laughs> I, just to respond, uh, Mr. Chair, Roosevelt is a different situation in the planning department's opinion based on the configuration of the traditional Main Street having a sawtooth pattern in that area. And uh, we felt that, and that's in our zone that we put there behind Roosevelt as well, not a traditional Main Street. It was to be sort of a, a transition uh, to that, allowing for buildings to start at six to go down to four and to right. two stories to, um, um, to uh, reflect upon the, uh, um, the height of buildings that already exist further along Roosevelt. So those are two different situations than the one that Andrew was talking about here uh, along this Main Street and uh, how uh, Mark Avenue or Mark Street has a parallel road to this it's a different context. Okay, thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councilor Looper. Councilor Moffat. Just a question on the zoning being R5. Why wouldn't you have considered a traditional Main Street here? Sorry. Mr. Chair, from the uh, official plan designation, the, the property is located in the general urban area designation. The proposal before us was for a residential use building, which is consistent with that designation and the R5 zoning is what we went with. It was based on the proposal before us. I just was noticed across the road without frontage on, on the, there's a TM3 zone, but in behind the TM3 zone, it's a, it's a traditional Main Street zone, which is directly across from 263 Greensway. Just curious. Thanks. Great. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor Moffat. Any further questions of staff? Seeing none on uh, this item, is this item carried? Carried. Thank you. On to the next item, uh, item number four. I want to thank uh, Mr. Flanagan for hanging out for so long. If I can get you to come forward, uh, this item is uh, 4840 Bank Street. We only have one speaker of note. Great. Uh, if I can get you to uh, just come down here, there's a microphone at the very end of the table. And uh, if you're new to coming to, uh, to committee, you have five minutes of talk time and the floor is yours. Sorry. Okay, this is in regards to the developments at 4747 Bank Street, 4755 Bank Street, 4789 Bank Street, and 4840 Bank Street. Um, Residential areas are uh, surrounding the Leitrim wetlands, and uh, there's a lot of conflictions with uh, the wildlife and uh, the human activity. There are snapping turtles roaming around in Finley Creek, turtles getting hit on roads, um, turtles nesting in sandboxes. Anyways, 
uh, these turtles need to go somewhere and it's not appropriate for them to be in the streets and in people's yards. So there needs to be more parkland around the buffer zone of um, the Leitrim wetlands. Uh, this is very important uh, to protect this area. And uh, that's why I oppose the decision for this development uh, because there's just too much going on between the sensitive wildlife here and um, all the new developments surrounding it with it in the middle, kind of like a donut. Um, anyways, I will go on uh, furthermore, there are more, um, this area is home to uh, many at-risk snapping turtles important to the Leitrim wetlands. To prevent these turtles from wandering in the development area and possibly nesting in the area, a fence will need to be installed. This fence will need to be surrounding the entire development area. The time of installation will need to take place at the Donner Spring right after the winter snow and ice is gone because these snappers will start wandering after winter hibernation in the clearing area. I have seen this at a nearby area being cut. Um, these uh, snapping turtles will flee to, uh, or any turtles will flee to Bank Street where they face um, road mortality. Once construction is complete, the snapping turtles and other turtles will need to adapt, but their home and refuge, the Leitrim wetlands, along with the parkland surrounding this, must always remain untouched. Thank you very much, oh, Vice Chair Hubel. I just want to, it's unfortunate that the, the council for the area couldn't be here today, but she talks uh, in that amendment that uh, she wants to uh, try and preserve some of the trees in that area, uh, but she doesn't mention anything about the turtles. Have you had a chance to talk to her about the, the turtles? I haven't talked to her about the turtles, but residents in the area have been unhappy with large snapping turtles. There's been large snapping turtles found on Bank Street um, in Friendly Creek that have died there, been hit by cars. Uh, one of them fleeing a uh, cutting area on uh, Bank Street um, where there's more development. So um, especially these snapping turtles that belong to the wetlands are having a hard time with the people, or the people are having a hard time with them. And uh, well, I would encourage you to talk to her because there's mitigation measures that can be taken. And, and yes. I'm not sure because she's not here to tell us uh, if that was the intent of that amendment or not, what she wanted to do with it. So I would encourage you to reach out to her because there are steps that she can take to uh, prevent that from happening. Okay. Uh, any further questions to the delegation? Seeing none, thank you very much, Daniel, for coming out today. I appreciate that. Um, so on this item, we do have the applicant, Aaron O'Connor and Vincent Denome from Claridge. Uh, do you see the need to speak or is any questions from the, uh, from the committee for our applicant today? I don't see any questions. Uh, do you feel the need to speak today? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, please come on down then. Good morning, uh, Chair and members of the Planning Committee. My name is Erin O'Connor. I'm the Manager of Land Development with the Regional Group and the applicant uh, for this property. Um, this property includes a range of housing types from singles to towns to medium rise. It also includes a commercial block and it also includes parkland and the area A that's on that plan is uh, part of a casino wetland buffer, which is about 100 meters from the casino wetland. The Leitrim wetland is actually uh, further east, I, I don't know how many meters, but it's significantly further from this development, and the, the Leitrim wetland also has a 120 meter buffer from that. Um, I just wanted to mention with, you know, this site as well as the one to the north of it, there's a large uh, t professional team who's monitoring the activities in that site, and over construction, they do monitor, and we do have a biologist on site, 
though we haven't seen any turtles yet. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Do we have questions to the applicant? Councilor Menard. Thanks very much. Similar to Councilor uh, Hubley's uh, intervention before, just wondering what, what staff have, have seen or observed in that area with regard to wildlife and uh, if there is mitigation measures that are being put in place at this point. Um, so through the subdivision process, there are um, conditions for not, not this subdivision, but the one um, to the west and north is abutting the wetland itself. Um, it's on the other, other slide. Um, so we are working with the Conservation Authority um, to... Um, uh, Can I get you to speak a little closer to the microphone? Oh, Thank you. So we are working with the Conservation Authority with respect to um, the subdivision agreement and any buffering or fencing would have to be approved by them. We also, uh, <coughs> Mr. Chair, have a wildlife protocol that uh, we follow in terms of when the subdivision is being developed to deal with wildlife so that those impacts are considered. Vice Chair Hoodley. So to, to follow along on, I think uh, uh, Councilman I and I share the same concern. So uh, the, all the protocols that are in place for dealing with wildlife, we have them across the city that we do these kinds of things, all that's all being followed. Uh, I believe you mentioned the conservation authorities already involved as well. And uh, has there been uh, like any public presentation about the measures being taken? Because normally we take quite a, a few uh, steps to make sure that you know turtles aren't hurt or any other uh, species in the area. Has that been part of, uh, like did, was there a counselor's uh, ward meeting or something on this or no? Uh, Mr. Chair, there was a public meeting held in the community. Um, this was not identified as a concern. It's, uh, it's a, historically it has been a, a large issue with the development of Leitrim, but uh, this particular subdivision is actually somewhat removed from that, so it's somewhat not surprising that that wasn't raised. Okay, thank you very much. Great, uh, thank you very much, Vice Chair. Uh, on uh, 4840 Bank Street, is this item carried? As amended. As amended. Thank you. So we're on to our final item today, which is uh, item number eight. Item number eight is the, uh, the Official Plan Amendment 150, Settlement of Appeals, Building Height and Design. So at this point, while we're waiting for everyone to get set up, I'll get Vice Chair Hubley to uh, go out and, and read the amending motion. Uh, therefore, be it resolved that pending the outcome of the hearing at the Local Planning Appeals Tribunal on May 22, 2019, that Planning Committee direct Planning, Infrastructure and Economic Development staff to bring the zoning provisions for the high-rise buildings for approval to the Planning Committee on June 13, 2019 and to Council on June 26, 2019. Great, thank you for that. Uh, so at this point, we do have staff. We do have uh, Murray Chown on the speakers list. Murray, are you here? <laughs> Great, thanks for hanging out. Uh, do you wish to speak today? I, I believe uh, this is held by Councilor Menard. Uh, were your questions uh, to, uh, would you have any questions to Mr. Chown or, or would it be to staff only? To staff, thank you very much, Murray. So we'll go right to questions to staff. Councilor Menard. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Um, just a couple of quick questions. And if you could just go through the process a little bit with me. Um, we're trying to settle uh, uh, this, this amendment uh, before it goes to, to LPAT. And this kind of carries on with the council instruction back in 2016 that sort of directed us to do this for a number of, um, a number of, of amendments. Um, in, in this scenario, when these are uh, pr presumably approved, um, Will the new official plan sort of, these will sort of be written in stone in the new official plan, I, I take it, that, that, that with the update that happens, likely these amendments that are occurring now would continue right along uh, with that update of the official plan. Mr. Chairman, it's uh, quite possible. However, the new official plan is a brand new official plan, so there is a public process that goes with the discussion of any and all policies that are associated with what uh, the new framework is going to be. Okay, that, that's helpful. Um, and then in terms of um, 
the, this one in particular. Uh, there's one section I did want to get some more insight from staff on, and that, that's the repeal of item 179 um, and the, uh, introducing a new policy 13. Um, can you go, it's in the, it's in the uh, details of document one. Can you just go through the rationale, why we're doing that? It seemed to be that we were receiving applications anyway. They were getting a, a approved for, for height variances either way and that this was sort of an impediment to that or I, I, I'd like to just get more information for the rationale for re removing that one. Certainly, Mr. Chair. Um, the current policies on that um, major urban facilities don't, do not have any height limits whatsoever. They only require a zoning amendment and these are typically major, major developments, hospitals, universities, and the like. Yeah. There's a requirement in the official plan that any of these facilities locate near transit, transit facilities. When we were doing OPA 150, there was, the emphasis was on certainty, that these are projects that in any, any circumstance get a high degree of scrutiny and evaluation. So in discussion with the industry, the industry was concerned that the limits that were placed in 150 restrict that because it would require an official plan amendment as well. And even now, these major facilities do not require an official plan amendment. Um, the proposed change is basically saying just leave these policies the way they are now. Okay, thank you for the clarification. That's it for me, thanks. Great, uh, Councillor Dudas. So just, just a point of clarification, and maybe it's uh, just me, but in terms of arterial main streets, and maybe this speaks to some of the other changes, um, it speaks to the fact that uh, new policy 11 recognizes that taller buildings may be considered at transit supportive locations. It goes on to speak about spe specific locations and you know transit priority routes and speaks to transit. Um, in the last little while, and, and actually probably over the past couple of years, we've been having this discussion about what comes first, transit or, or development. And I'm just curious as to how this ties into, does it mean future transit? Are we talking about existing transit? Uh, it speaks to major intersections, for instance, that could be conducive for transit priority, but we know that at this point only one bus runs down. So I'm just trying to get some clarification. When we're speaking about transit, are we talking about current state? Are we talking about future state? Are we talking about vision state? What are we looking at? Uh, Mr. To the Chair, uh, we are talking about planned transit. Okay, so future. F future, yes. Um, if we were talking about current transit, we would be forever chasing whatever tr um, OC transport chain determines in terms of its bus routing. Mm -hmm. The plan is set up as a vision of the future and we have in our official plan a transit plan that is the ultimate. And that includes potential locations for stations and in those locations we encourage development because it's better to get the development in there to support the transit when it is delivered. So thank you very much for that. And I think that that's um, something that we definitely need to be looking at as we're amending the official plan, the TMP, as well as any future developments that we need to look at how transit is going to not just be in the future, but what we can do to encourage those developments to incorporate transit focused. Because I'm being just selfish. I'm looking at one that's coming up in my ward. I know we just passed one at the intersection of Hunt Club and Riverside. We need to start being proactive um, and making sure that we're looking to the future, but incorporating the elements now that will provide some relief. So uh, I'm fine with all of this. I just wanted that clarification. But now that I know that this is going to feed into the conversation going forward, that has to be at the forefront. Thank you very much. That's very much the idea, Mr. Chairman, through the official plan. Great. So thank you. I'm looking around, seeing no further questions of staff on this item, item number eight, official plan, 150 settlement appeals. Is this item carried? Yep. So we're carrying the motion first, and then uh, Vice Chair Hoobie read out the amending motion. So on the amending motion, is that carried? Great. Uh, so uh, we have no notice, notices of motion, no inquiries, other business. This will be adjournment. Our next meeting will take place Thursday, April 25th, 2019. Thank you very much, everyone.